welcome to the Cosmic Egg Stories, today we will be talking about, Gilgamesh, Engadu and the Netherworld. In those days, in those distant days, in those nights, in those remote nights, in those years, in those distant years. In days of yore, when the necessary things had been brought into manifest existence, in days of yore, when the necessary things had been for the first time properly cared for, when bread had been tasted for the first time in the shrines of the land, when the ovens of the land had been made to work, when the heavens had been separated from the earth, when the earth had been delimited from the heavens, when the fame of mankind had been established, when An had taken the heavens for himself, when Enlil had taken the earth for himself, when the netherworld had been given to Ira Kigla as a gift. When he set sail, when he set sail, when the father set sail for the nether world, when Enki set sail for the nether world, against the king a storm of small hailstones arose, against Enki a storm of large hailstones arose. The small ones were light ummers, the large ones were like stones from catapults. The keel of Enki's little boat was trembling as if it were being butted by turtles. The waves at the bow of the boat rose to devour the king like wolves and the waves at the stern of the boat were attacking Enki like a lion. At that time, there was a single tree, a single halub tree, a single tree, growing on the bank of the pure Euphrates, being watered by the Euphrates. The force of the south wind uprooted it and stripped its branches, and the Euphrates picked it up and carried it away. A woman, respectful of Anne's words, was walking along. A woman, respectful of Enlil's words, was walking along, and took the tree and brought it into Anug, into Inanna's luxuriant garden. The woman planted the tree with her feet, but not with her hands. The woman watered it using her feet but not her hands. She said, When will this be a luxuriant chair on which I can take a seat? She said, When this will be a luxuriant bed on which I can lie down? Five years, ten years went by, the tree grew massive. Its bark, however, did not split. At its roots, a snake immune to incantations made itself a nest. In its branches, the Anzud bird settled its young. In its trunk, the phantom maid built herself a dwelling, the maid who laughs with a joyful heart. But holy Inanna cried. When dawn was breaking, when the horizon became bright, when the little birds, at the break of dawn, began to clamor, when Yuta had left his bedchamber, his sister Holy Inanna said to the young warrior Yutu, My brother, in those days when destiny was determined, when abundance overflowed in the land, when An had taken the heavens for himself, when Enlil had taken the earth for himself, when the netherworld had been given to Ira Kigla as a gift. When he set sail, when he set sail, when the father set sail for the netherworld, when Enki set sail for the netherworld. Against the lord a storm of small hailstones arose, against Enki a storm of large hailstones arose. The small ones were light ummers, the large ones were like stones from catapults. The keel of Enki's little boat was trembling as if it were being butted by turtles, the waves at the bow of the boat rose to devour the lord like wolves and the waves at the stern of the boat were attacking Enki like a lion. At that time, there was a single tree, a single halub tree, a single tree, rowing on the bank of the pure Euphrates, being watered by the Euphrates. The force of the south wind uprooted it and stripped its branches, and the Euphrates picked it up and carried it away. I, a woman, respectful of Anne's words, was walking along. I, a woman, respectful of Enlil's words, was walking along, and took the tree and brought it into Anug, into holy Inanna's luxuriant garden. I, the woman, planted the tree with my feet, but not with my hands. I, Inanna watered it using my feet but not my hands. She said, When will this be a luxuriant chair on which I can take a seat? She said, When will this be a luxuriant bed on which I can lie down? Five years, ten years had gone by, the tree had grown massive. Its bark, however, did not split. At its roots, a snake immune to incantations made itself a nest. In its branches, the Anzud bird settled its young. In its trunk, the phantom maid built herself a dwelling, the maid who laughs with a joyful heart. But holy Inanna cried. Her brother, the young warrior Yutu, however, did not stand by her in the matter. 
when dawn was breaking, when the horizon became bright, when the little birds, at the break of dawn, began to clamor, when Uta had left his bedchamber, his sister Holy Inanna said to the warrior Gilgank, my brother, in those days when destiny was determined, when abundance overflowed in the land, when An had taken the heavens for himself, when Enlil had taken the earth for himself, when the netherworld had been given to Ira Kigla as a gift. When he set sail, when he set sail, when the father set sail for the nether world, when Enki set sail for the nether world, against the lord a storm of small hailstones arose, against Enki a storm of large hailstones arose. The small ones were light ummers, the large ones were like stones from catapults. The keel of Enki's little boat was trembling as if it were being butted by turtles, the waves at the bow of the boat rose to devour the lord like wolves and the waves at the stern of the boat were attacking Enki like a lion. At that time, there was a single tree, a single halub tree, a single tree, growing on the bank of the pure Euphrates, being watered by the Euphrates. The force of the south wind uprooted it and stripped its branches, and the Euphrates picked it up and carried it away. I, a woman, respectful of Anne's words, was walking along. I, a woman, respectful of Enlil's words, was walking along, and took the tree and brought it into Anug, into Inanna's luxuriant garden. The woman planted the tree with her feet, but not with her hands. Inanna watered it using her feet but not her hands. She said, When will this be a luxuriant chair on which I can take a seat? She said, When will this be a luxuriant bed on which I can lie down? Five years, ten years had gone by, the tree had grown massive. Its bark, however, did not split. At its roots, a snake immune to incantations made itself a nest. In its branches, the Anza bird settled its young. In its trunk, the phantom maid built herself a dwelling, the maid who laughs with a joyful heart. But holy Inanna, I, holy Inanna, cried. In the matter which his sister had told him about, her brother, the warrior Gilgank, stood by her. He strapped his, belt of fifty minas weight to his waist, fifty minas were to him as thirty shekels. He took his bronze axe used for expeditions, which weighs seven talents and seven minas. In his hand, he killed the snake immune to incantations living at its roots. The Anza bird living in its branches took up its young and went into the mountains. The phantom maid living in its trunk left her dwelling and sought refuge in the wilderness. As for the tree, he uprooted it and stripped its branches, and the sons of his city, who went with him, cut up its branches and bundled them. He gave it to his sister Holy Inanna for her chair. He gave it to her for her bed. As for himself, from its roots, he manufactured his elag and, from its branches, he manufactured his echidma. He played elag in the broad square, never wanting to stop playing it, and he praised himself in the broad square, never wanting to stop praising himself. The young men of his city were playing elag. The him who made the team of the widow's children, they lamented, Oh my neck! Oh my hips! For those that had a mother, the mother brought bread for her son. For those that had a sister, the sister poured water for her brother. As the evening came, he marked the spot where the where the alak had been placed. And he picked up his alak from in front of him and took it home. But early in the morning as he, the place marked, the widow's accusation and the young girl's complaint caused his alak and his echidma to fall down to the bottom of the nether world. He could not reach them by, he tried with his hand but could not reach them, tried with his foot but could not reach them. At the gate of Ganza, in front of the nether world, he sat down. Gilgame wept, crying bitterly, O oh my Elak! O oh my Echidma! O oh my Elak! I am still not satiated with its charms, the game with it has not yet pulled for me. If only my Elak waited still in the carpenter's house for me. I would treat the carpenter's wife like my own mother, if only it waited still there for me. I would treat the carpenter's child like my little sister, if only it waited still there for me. My elak has fallen down to the nether world, who will retrieve it for me? Who will retrieve my elak from the nether world? My kidma has fallen down to Ganza, who will retrieve it for me? Who will retrieve my kidma from Ganza?
His servant Enkidu answered him My king, you weep. Why does your heart worry? Today I shall retrieve your Elag from the nether world, I shall retrieve your Echidma from Ganza. Gilgamek answered Enkidu, If today you were going to go down to the nether world, let me advise you. My instructions should be followed. Let me talk to you. Pay attention to my words, my words should be followed. You should not put on your clean garments, they would recognize immediately that you are alien. You should not anoint yourself with fine oil from a bowl, they would surround you at its scent. You should not hurl throw sticks in the nether world, those struck down by the throw sticks would surround you. You should not not hold a cornel wood stick in your hand, the spirits would feel insulted by you. You should not put sandals on your feet. You should not shout in the nether world. You should not kiss your beloved wife. You should not hit your wife even if you are annoyed with her. You should not kiss your beloved child. You should not hit your son even if you are annoyed with him. The outcry aroused would detain you in the nether world. She who lies there, she who lies there. Dinazah's mother who lies there, her pure shoulders are not covered with a garment, and no linen is spread over her pure breast. She has fingers like a pickaxe, she plucks her hair out like leeks. Enkidu, however, did not heed not his master's words. He put on his clean garments and they recognized that he was alien. He anointed himself with fine oil from a bowl and they surrounded him at its scent. He hurled throw sticks in the nether world and those struck down by the throw sticks surrounded him. He held a corner wood stick in his hand and the spirits felt insulted by him. He put sandals on his feet. He caused irritation in the nether world. He kissed his beloved wife and hit his wife when he was annoyed with her. He kissed his beloved child and hit his son when he was annoyed with him. He aroused an outcry and was detained in the nether world. Moria Gilgank, son of Ninsimun, directed his steps on his own to Eker, the temple of Enlil. He cried before Enlil, Father Enlil, my Elag fell down into the nether world, my Echidma fell down into Ganza. Enkidu went down to retrieve them, but the nether world has seized him. Nimchar did not seize him. The Asag did not seize him. But the nether world has seized him. The Uduk demon of Nagal, who spares nobody, did not seize him, but the nether world has seized him. He did not fall in battle on the field of manhood, but the nether world has seized him. Father Enlil did not stand by him in the matter, so he went to Eriduk. In Eriduk he directed his steps on his own to the temple of Enki. He cried before Enki, Father Enki, my Elag fell down into the nether world, my Echidma fell down into Ganza. Enkidu went down to retrieve them but the nether world has seized him. Nimchar did not seize him, the Asag did not seize him. But the nether world has seized him. The Uduk demon of Nagal, who spares nobody, did not seize him, but the nether world has seized him. He did not fall in battle on the field of manhood, but the nether world has seized him. Father Enki stood by him in this matter. He said to the young warrior Yutu, the son born by Ningal, open a hole in the nether world immediately, and then bring up his servant from the nether world. He opened a hole in the nether world and brought up his servant with his breeze from the nether world. They hugged and kissed. They wearied each other with questions, did you see the order of the nether world? If only you would tell me, my friend, if only you would tell me. If I tell you the order of the nether world, sit down and weep. I shall sit down and weep. Which your heart rejoiced to touch, is, worms infested like an old garment. Like, of a crevice, it is full of dust. Alas! He said and sat down in the dust. Did you see him who had one son? I saw him. How does he fare? He weeps bitterly at the wooden peg which was driven into his wall. Did you see him who had two sons? I saw him. How does he fare? He sits on a couple of bricks, eating bread. Did you see him who had three sons? I saw him. How does he fare? He drinks water from a saddle water skin. Did you see him who had four sons? I saw him. How does he fare? His heart rejoices like a man who has four asses to yoke. Did you see him who had five sons? I saw him. How does he fare? 
like a good scribe he is indefatigable, he enters the palace easily. Did you see him who had six sons? I saw him. How does he fare? He is a cheerful as a ploughman. Did you see him who had seven sons? I saw him. How does he fare? As a companion of the gods, he sits on a throne and listens to judgments. Did you see the palace eunuch? I saw him. How does he fare? Like a useless alilistic he is propped in a corner. Did you see the woman who never gave birth? I saw her. How does she fare? Like a pot, she is thrown away violently, she gives no man joy. Did you see the young man who never undressed his wife? I saw him. How does he fare? You finish a rope. And he weeps over the rope. Did you see the young woman who never undressed her husband? I saw her. How does she fare? You finish a reed mat, and she weeps over the reed mat. Did you see him who had no heir? I saw him. How does he fare? Like him who, bricks, he eats bread. I saw him. How does he fare? Did you see? His food is set apart, his water is set apart, he eats the food offered to him, he drinks the water offered to him. Did you see him who was eaten by a lion? He cries bitterly, Oh my hands! Oh my legs! Did you see him who fell down from the roof? They cannot, his bones. Did you see the leprous man? He twitches like an ox as the worms eat at him. Did you see him who fell in battle? I saw him. How does he fare? His father and mother are not there to hold his head, and his wife weeps. Did you see the spirit of him who has no funerary offerings? I saw him. How does he fare? He eats the scraps and the crumbs, tossed out in the street. Did you see him hit by a ship's board when diving? How does he fare? Alas, my mother! The man cries to her. As he pulls out the ship's board, he, crossbeam, crumbs. Did you see my little stillborn children who never knew existence? I saw them. How do they fare? They play at a table of gold and silver, laden with honey and ghee. Did you see him who died? I saw him. How does he fare? He lies on a bed of the gods. Did you see him who was set on fire? I did not see him. His spirit is not about. His smoke went up to the sky. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more and thank you for watching.